it's Jan Bobak from Anderson and Bobak. Welcome to my office. We're here to talk about our vlog series. Today's topic, depositions. What are you gonna do when you're called for a dep? So when you're called for a deposition, you might be wondering, how am I gonna prepare for this? There's some things that you should be aware of. Who's gonna be at the deposition is something I'm often asked. Well, you, you're gonna be at the deposition because the questions are gonna be asked of you. Your attorney's gonna accompany you. The person asking you the questions, which is your, uh, your spouse or the other side's attorney, they're gonna be present. And if there's any other attorneys involved in the case, they will also be present. And there'll be a GAL or a child rep. You'll be put under oath and it's gonna be an informal proceeding, but I want you to be very careful and not let that um, put you off guard because it's a very important proceeding. Anything you say can and might very well be used against you in trial. So it's important to be truthful and it's important to be clear. A judge won't be appearing at deposition and a judge might not even read the deposition unless one of the attorneys is asking them to do it. So although a judge is present and you're gonna be in a conference room, it's a very important proceedings. So first of all, when you're asked a question, it's very important to pause and think before answering. It's critical that you set the tone of the deposition. When you're asked a question, think about it and then provide your answer. In conversation, generally day to day, we cut each other off. It's a common practice. This is not something you wanna do at a deposition. We need a clean record and you need to think about it and as I said, it's important that you set the pace of the deposition. Secondly, don't volunteer any information. It's important if you're asked a question to answer the specific question. For example, they may ask you, do you know what time it is? Your answer is yes, or your answer is no. When you really wanna say, yes, it's three o'clock, but that's not the question that was asked of you. So keep in mind, if the question is asked of you, answer only the question and don't volunteer any information. The next thing is make sure you understand the question. When you're asked a question at a deposition, don't say, well, if you mean this, my answer is that, or I think this, or I think this might be, if this is what you're saying, just make sure you understand the question. If you don't understand it, it's okay to say, I don't understand the question. Can you please ask me again? Sometimes when you're in a deposition, they're asking you questions about things that happened quite some time ago. So it's perfectly fine to say, I don't remember. It's perfectly fine to say, I don't know. If you're handed a document and asked a question about that, it's important that you understand the document and that you have read the document. Whenever you are handed a document and asked a question, it's important that you are familiar with the document and that you've had an opportunity to read the document. So it's okay to be handed a document and asked a question, but take the time to read through it so that you understand it. Some attorneys will wait for you to fill silence. They'll ask you a question, you'll answer it, and then they'll silently look at you. And you may think, maybe my answer wasn't correct, or maybe they need something else. Don't feel like you need to fill that silence. Answer the question and then wait for the next one. Sometimes you'll get asked a question twice at different times during the deposition. They'll say something like, oh, I don't know if I've asked you this question, but stick to your answer. Whatever answer you gave the first time, your truthful answer, stick to that answer. Don't think, oh, if they asked me that question, I must have answered it wrong the first time. Stick with your answer. At the end of the deposition, you'll be asked if you want a waive signature. Waiving signature means that you're not gonna to come to their office and read through the transcript. You're going to assume that the court reporter took everything down properly and will transcribe it properly, and you're not going to come to their office and read it. However, you can reserve your signature, and once the transcript is ready, go to their office, review it, and sign off on it. Doesn't mean you get to change your answers. It doesn't mean you get to change what you said or add anything to it. It's just your chance to review the transcript. Thanks for watching, and for more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. See you next time.